Today, I'm going to show you three different methods to increase the quality of your AI images totally for free. Option number one I wanted to share with you is dgb.lol. This will be linked in the description along with all of the other tools that I'm going to mention in this video. And once you're on the homepage, in order to get started with upscaling, you want to go to the left where it says tools, click on this, and then select the AI image upscaler. There are a lot of other tools as well, by the way, that you can use for free. Another popular option that they have is the mid journey splitter. So that's handy for anyone who uses mid journey a lot. Let's click on the AI image upscaler though, and I will drag a few files into this. So the first reason why I really like DGB is because as an online free upscaler, you can use it in bulk, which no one really else offers for free. So you can drag up to 20 images into this right here on the free version and have them added to your upscaling queue at once. On top of that, another reason why I like them is you get all of these different models to test out to get different results. So depending on your input image, how detailed it is or how simple it is, you know, if it's very simple, then you might want to try the cartoon option down here. Or if it's a photograph, then another option might work better. It just really depends on your input. You will have to test some different models, find out what works best for you. But the cool thing is these range up all the way to eight X upscaler. So whilst most other free alternatives only go up to 2x or 4x, which would be the models at the top right here, these are 4x. This one you can choose 6x as well as 8x for free. And if you're designing t-shirts like me, 6x is big enough that will give you high enough resolution. If you want to go as high as possible, then use the 8x options. And those would also be suitable for so like some bigger products, like bigger poster sizes, or potentially things like, you know, pillowcases, whatever you're trying to sell that has a larger print area. In that case, you can just select the 8x upscaler. So let me actually show you this as an example, then I'm going to use the Lambda one. And then you get an additional option right here that I also want to explain to you. So enhance the input image. So this does what it says enhances the images quality before upscale. The way this works, if I understood it correctly, is that before your image gets upscaled, it's a little bit like a mini Photoshop AI that runs through your image, it scans it for little imperfections, tries to adjust the colors to make it more vibrant. And it runs a lot of different tasks and tools to optimize the image before it goes into the upscale queue. And I've tested this side by side, like I've used the same graphics with this option enabled and disabled. And when you have it enabled, it seems to look better in the output. Sometimes a few of the artifacts are not there anymore. Those like annoying blurry bits that you get with AI, or sometimes the color scheme just looks a lot better in the final output. So I do recommend turning this on and testing it out. That's definitely a cool option that Tom recently added to this site. So these are the settings that I would suggest if you want the best quality output, and then you have to click submit, then it's going to say tasks queued. The queue is over here where it says my files. And in this case, we're going to have to wait about 42 minutes. So it gives you an estimate right here in terms of how long it's going to take. That's not always 100% accurate. Sometimes it's a lot quicker than the estimate. And this time also massively depends on the time of day, how many, many people are using this site at the moment. Sometimes I go in here and it only takes five minutes. And even if you upscale like 20 graphics at once, five or 10 minutes sometimes is enough to get those through. And I think that wait time is totally acceptable considering you get the best quality results with a free upscaler that is online, there's another option I'm going to talk about in a minute, which is on your PC that also gets great results. But this is an online upscaler. So it uses someone else's resources, someone else's graphic cards to increase the quality of your designs. And all you have to do is wait a little while occasionally, right? But at the same time, whilst this is running, you can go to a different page, you can do something else, you can create more graphics, do more research, whatever you want to do, upload your designs to a marketplace, come back to this, in a little while, then hit the little refresh button over here and it should give you your files ready for download. You can download the entire list of these by clicking the blue button over here at the top, this little cloud symbol, and that's then going to download the entire list. You've also got the option to delete all of the files in the queue if you want to. I think they get automatically deleted 24 hours after you've uploaded them. So yeah, that's it in terms of DGB and how to use it. I've tested it multiple times on this channel and always had very, very good results. It's always performed very, very well against some of the other upscalers that I tested. So DGB, massive recommendation, and it keeps getting better and better, the quality, the options that they have, and it is free to use, which is amazing. Option number two that I've got for you is upscale.org. And 
Upscale is another really, really good free upscaling option. The difference to DGB is that Upscale works on your own device. So it's a piece of software that you download, you install, and then you open up the program on your machine, you drag in your files. I'll show you this in a minute, by the way. And then it uses your own graphics card, your own GPU to actually enhance the quality. And that is good if you've got a, a fast PC, a fast machine that you're working with that has a good graphics card, because then you don't have any wait time. You just drag the files in, upscale them, one minute later, it's all done. However, if you don't have a fast computer, or maybe you have a laptop, which those tend to have worse graphics cards, then this program might not be the best option for you because it will probably freeze or the upscaling won't be completed properly. You might get some error messages, stuff like that. So upscale is a good option if you have a fast machine. It seems like they are working on an online version as well, which is definitely interesting. You can join the wait list here. Apparently I've just done that. So if I get access to it, I might make another video. But yeah, upscale, let's take a look at it actually on the device. You can download it by the way, in the top right corner, just click the download button and then it will give you the options right here, depending on what device you're on. In my case, you know, I just click on Windows, wait for that to download, install it and finish. So here we go. This is what it actually looks like. Once you've got it opened on your device, we've got some settings to go through. If you want to, um, you, you can change the color scheme, which is quite quite fun, to be honest. So we've got fantasy, that's very bright. Halloween, um, that's pretty cool. Forest, so yeah, that is just, you know, to play around with. Um, it doesn't really affect your end result. Then we've got the image type. I usually just leave that at the default, JPEG, and then turn the image into a PNG afterwards by removing the background. Then you've got the image scale, that's also interesting, and the rest is not too important. This tab right here is where the magic happens. So essentially, all you have to do is select an image. So click on this. You want to choose an image from your device and hit open. And then it's going to load this into upscale. You can change the model. So you have got a few different options in terms of models right here. And um, I've tested those in a separate video and kind of compared the different results. If you want to check that out, it will be linked in the cards. I tend to just use the default, to be honest, for print and demand graphics right here. And you can also click double upscale, which is interesting because you see the final output here at the bottom, instead of going to 4,000 pixels, so 4x upscaler. If you hit double upscale, it goes to 16,000 pixels, meaning it takes that new image, the 4,000 pixel image, and runs it again. It 4x's it again. So it's kind of like a 16x upscale at the end of the day, which is crazy. This one takes a lot longer, and I wouldn't recommend even pressing start on this if you've got a slow device. Um, it would probably, you know, crash your machine, potentially, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so double upscale is an option, and it can give you some crazy results. Um, it just takes a while. You can select the output folder. If you don't, I think it just saves it in the exact same path um, where your original files are, or it creates a new folder there. And it's very sort of intuitive that way, but you can set a different output folder. And then you just click upscale and that's it. It says, hold on, doing the upscale magic. You get a percentage slider as well. And you know, you might be wondering, this is a bit annoying doing it one at a time if mm. DGB can do it in bulk, but you can also scroll up right here where it says batch upscale, enable this function. And now you can select an entire folder. Just save all of your files into the same folder and it can be 50, it can be 100, however many you want, however long you want to wait. Save them all in the same folder. Again, choose the model, set an output folder if you want to, and then hit upscale. That can take a long time, again, depending on how many files you select, but the benefit is it's not limited. This is running on your own device, so you could have 50, 100, 200 images being batch upscaled at once. You might hear your fans sort of speeding up to try and cool down your uh, GPU, but that's about it. So it's cool to have this option of single and batch upscale with the different models. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how upscale works. I hope you have fun with it and I hope it is useful for you if you hadn't heard of it before. In some cases, you might want to use an alternative way to upscale your graphics or in increase their quality called vectorizing. And you used to be able to do that with vectorizer.ai. That was a really cool free tool, but now that is paid. The best alternative that I've found is SVG Converter. Again, linked in the description, and I'll show you how to use it right now. So you want to drag and drop your graphic onto the right hand side of the homepage where the circle is, just let go and then it's going to open a new site or a new page, I should say. If we zoom in on the left, this essentially shows the original image very, very pixelated, as you can tell. And on the right, we're going to see the vectorized version, I just need to actually click vectorize down here, then it's going to process and show us the vector output, you do have a bunch of settings on this um, sidebar to kind of optimize the result and adjust it slightly. Um, I'm going to show you some of the settings that I would typically adjust 
to get a better or more accurate result. In this case, if we zoom in, it already looks pretty decent in my opinion. Um, so it's done a good job. If we zoom in very far, you can clearly see the difference between the left and the right hand side. Vector is very, very smooth and can give you some very crisp results. Um, what I tend to do in the settings right here is change this from unlimited colors to custom. That way we can kind of reduce the amount of colors and keep it a bit more simple. So if you click on custom and maybe change this to about 15, is that enough? maybe 18 you will have to mess around with it a little bit actually i'll try 15 to begin with and then hit save i also like to change the blending right here from zero to complete and then click vectorize again it's going to process for a little while and update our result there we go so i don't notice much of a difference there is definitely less colors here in the middle but yeah overall this still looks great if you're not happy with the result also try messing around with some of the other settings like details and um, like the edges over here in terms of the file format i tend to export at svg but you can also choose ai eps or pdf instead for your format and a quick bonus tip you can click on edit image right here in the top left corner and then you can zoom in and kind of modify this image quite a bit so let's say um, we've got a bit of an imperfection in our AI image and we want to get rid of it what would be an example of that okay maybe this little bit of gray right here we don't we don't want that then what we can do is we can actually fill it in with the same color as the rest so this this black we can paste it onto the gray in order to do that you want to choose the color picker over here click on the black then choose the color fill option right here and you get this little paint bucket just click on the on the gray bits and there we go it's been filled in um, additionally if i go back to the hand symbol to move around the canvas i'm scrolling by the way to zoom in and out additionally if you want to add a little bit onto this or, or draw onto it you can also use the edit pixel right here that gives you a little pencil and then you can add uh, to this graphic which is pretty cool so there we go we've added a bit onto this and now if i hit save up here and I make sure to have a use segmented image enabled the segmented image is what we just did we just added some something to it once you have this enabled click vectorize again and then it's going to refresh this with the changes you've made for zoom in now yeah this is completely black now instead of gray and black and we've got an extra bump right here on the wing which is not existent in the original one so that is very sort of fine detail tuning but it is an option with svg converter which is pretty cool and then once you're done and once you're happy with the result just go all the way to the bottom in the right corner and click on download and for a quick comparison i've pulled all of the results into photoshop right here and i've actually done the best possible result for each one of the platforms that I've shown you. So upscale, this is a 16x result that we're looking at right now. Then DGB is going to be 8x. I use the Lambda for that one, the Lambda uh, 8x option. And we've got SVG converter at the end, which as you can see, looks very different. Um, if we zoomed out between DGB and upscale, you can't see that much difference whilst we're zoomed out. DGB, which we can see right now, does seem to have more contrast and slightly more vibrant colors that is due to that like mini photoshop option like enhancing the image before upscaling so i think that's a good first impression to dgb in this case um, at a zoomed out point svg converter looks totally different in the aesthetic because it is a vectorizer and vectors do tend to look different and um, especially if the image is very detailed which this burger is so this is not the greatest example in terms of you know vectorizing AI images, this burger I think generally looks better when you keep it in a raster file format. But let's zoom in further, take a look at the details. So if we look at this edge of the ketchup right here, for example, we're currently looking at upscale 16X. Looks very, very crisp and sharp, by the way, even if you zoom in very, very close. And let's look, let's reveal DGB. So that still looks really good. It looks slightly more pixelated and grainy. Um, if we zoom in even further, you can tell the difference. There we go. This is upscale 16x DGB. So obviously 16x is going to look crisper than 8x. That is obvious. But overall, if you compare the two, I don't think there's that much between them. Um, I also like that DGB kind of enhances some of this right here. So if, if I turn upscale on, you're going to see a lot of like cloudiness um, in some of these areas and DGB kind of gets rid of that so i think that's the new enhance function that kind of just optimizes the image and makes it look less ai you can also see that very well up here so if we if we focus on this edge of the burger this is dgb this is upscale 16x zoom in a bit further 
this is DGB. You can see that the outline is a lot clearer, whereas upscale has this kind of blur effect and it's, it seems to be smoother in a sense. So although upscale right here has the higher quality, they go up to like 16,000 pixels, whereas DGB is 8,000 pixels. I think if we focus on this part of the image, DGB looks better. That's just my personal opinion, by the way. You're open to having your own opinion. If you prefer upscale, go ahead and use it. That's fine. Oh, I don't think upscale is a bad result. It still looks really, really good. And we're going very, very far into zooming in very far and being nitpicky right here. But I think this edge is definitely better handled by DGB. If we use converter or if we put SVG converter into the equation, now you're going to see that this is more of a straight, crisp outline right here which is the nature of vectors, and it doesn't really look very pixelated at all, even though we're in Photoshop. However, there's not much detail to it. So this is SVG Converter, this is DGB. Completely different aesthetic. SVG Converter, DGB. Let's do the same comparison down here, where we were before. This is DGB, this is SVG Converter, and this is Upscale, SVG Converter. Okay, so I think you kind of get the difference. Let's look at some of this, these salad -y bits. Yeah, you can just tell there's not much uh, detail left in this. SVG converter, upscale. SVG converter, DGB. All right, I hope that helps you understand what the differences look like. I think, you know, in my personal opinion, DGB did the best job overall. And considering you need a very fast device to use upscale to, to get that massive quality, you know, I think for most people, DGB is going to be the most applicable or use SVG converter if you prefer using vectors or working with vectors or you have very simplistic graphics that, you know, would just work better as a vector compared to this very detailed burger image. So yeah, hope that comparison helps. If you're uncertain whether to upscale or vectorize your graphics and you're not really sure what the differences are, then you would massively benefit from watching this video next where I explain everything you need to know regarding upscaling versus vectorizing.